If you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this, people, who have encountered cryptids, creatures, unknown beings, etc., in woods or outdoors. What was it? This is not my own story, it was told to me by a co-worker whom I trust and respect. This took place in East Tennessee in the 90s or early 2000s, as far as I know. He's out parked in his truck in a state forest area with a girl late at night. They drank a few beers, so take it as you will. It's a clear night in the winter time, so there's no undergrowth, there's rolling hills and hardwood forest with leaf cover on the ground. It was a clear night with lots of moonlight. I don't know if he heard something or if he just saw it, but he saw a werewolf-type creature running through the trees and up the hill. It was large, tall, and on two legs. It was silhouetted by the moonlight on a ridge line, and he and the girl hightailed it out of there in the truck. If you're familiar with the stories of the dogman, it sounds like this is what he says he saw. I know there's more to the story, but this is all that I can remember. I've hiked through this area myself dozens of times in the daytime, and I've never seen anything, but it's a pretty desolate section of forest that something like this could have the freedom to move through without much trouble from people. I grew up in East Tennessee. My dad's backyard was not so much a yard as it was a very steep hill leading up to a patch of woods. A trail led from my dad's property into the woods and eventually to a children's home on the other side of this wooded area. Anyway, my childhood friend and I would often go mess around in the woods, having pretend adventures, etc. On one such occasion, we both saw something up in a tree. I should say most of these trees were quite tall, with few branches to climb on. So this thing was very high up in the tree and was coming down the trunk backwards and circling the trunk on its way down. Our first thought was that it was a cub or adolescent bear. This was in town, mind you, so that would be unusual but still not unheard of. But, frozen in fear and curiosity, we watched it come all the way down the tree and got a pretty close look at it. Not a bear cub. Maybe there are 10 meters between us and the creature. It wasn't a bear, and it wasn't a bobcat, no bobcats are that close to town, and this was in daylight. It was a solid gray and seemingly alone. We looked at it, it looked at us, and we booked it back to the house. I still have no clue what it could have been. The wampus cat is a regional legend, and it crossed my mind at the time, but I just don't know. Last week, a friend and I went to Cuba for vacation. We were on the Playa Ancon coast. It was New Year's Day, around 3 a.m., when it happened. After a night of drinking and dancing, we decided to go to the beach for a little bit. It was nearly pitch black outside and we were just walking around on the shore talking and looking at the stars. Suddenly, my friend calls my name and tells me to look down the shore. What we saw was a radiantly glowing white figure, about 300 meters away. It had long legs and a head. I immediately thought of the Fresno Nightcrawler, though at the time I didn't know what it was called, we nicknamed it the Ocean Alien. My friend said that before I had seen it, it was just standing there, and for a moment it looked as though it had stepped into the water, submerged completely, and then stepped back onto the beach. We stared at it for a couple moments, and then it started taking slow steps towards us. We both got so scared that we booked it back to our hotel room without looking back. We were both rattled, so we didn't sleep for most of the night. The next few days of our trip, we asked guests and employees at our hotel, we even went to the city closest to our hotel and asked a bunch of locals, and nobody knew what we were talking about or could provide any possible explanations for what we saw. We even went back to the beach a few other nights around the same time but never saw it again. Unfortunately, we were both so frightened by the ocean alien that neither of us thought to take our phones out and take any photos or videos. Does anybody have any idea of what it could have been? I've done some research about Cuban folklore and cryptid sightings and haven't found anything even remotely similar. This experience happened about six years ago. I was dog-sitting for a family friend of my then-girlfriend's family for some extra money. I would go over to their house once in the morning and once in the evening to feed the dog and walk it around the backyard on a leash to do its business. It was a smaller dog, one of those that seems to overcompensate for its size by trying to be big, bad, and scary, barking at everything with no fear. I was doing this for a solid week. On the second to last night, I was over there, walking the dog in the backyard as usual. It was fairly dark by that time, not pitch black, but dark enough that you couldn't comfortably walk around without a light. The moon was out, so that helped a bit, but I also had my phone's flashlight on. The backyard was not fenced, hence the leash, and it was probably a good 15 feet of flat ground before it became thick, tall grassy slash weed type foliage. Behind that was just wood. The dog always took a long time sniffing around every damn weed, rock, and what have you. Then it suddenly froze, as if too scared to move a muscle. At the same time, I heard a rustling, maybe 20 feet ahead of me and to my right. 
I shined my phone's flashlight in the direction, but it was obviously not helpful. The rustling grew louder, but it did not sound like it was getting closer to me. Finally, I started seeing the tall grassy foliage start to move, and then I saw something emerge from it. Its size was similar to that of an adult black bear, but it was covered in skin that was whitish in color. It wasn't filled out or bulbous like a bear, but seemed rather lean instead. Imagine a large white gorilla, but with no hair, hunched down on its front arms and legs. It didn't make any grunting or growling noises, and somehow it looked like it was moving in slow motion. The dog, which would normally bark at anything, started to whimper. At this point, my eyes had started adjusting to the dim light, and I saw the thing turn its head towards me. I don't believe it had a face. I ran back to the house with that dog so fast, I would have beaten Usain Bolt. The next day I went out with an actual flashlight, but nothing out of the ordinary happened. This was in Lawrenceville, Georgia, around the fall season. I remember there were leaves everywhere, and it was that sort of damp and chilly fall weather. So anyway, yeah. I have not told a soul about this until now. I don't live around there anymore, or else I'd probably go back and investigate. Let me know your thoughts. So this time I was riding my motorcycle on a small mountain pass in western Switzerland. The night was pretty clear, thanks to the moon and the very snowy mountains that were reflecting the light. But there was no snow where I was, it was pretty higher than the road. I was driving pretty fast because of the cold air that was hurting my knees and fingers and the urge to be in my warm bed when, in a turn, just before a bridge, I saw what I think was a wounded man, kneeling on the side of the road, holding his stomach. Car crashes are common on this road, so I slowed up to see if everything was okay when the guy stood up really fast. I only saw him clearly when he crossed the road, thanks to my headlights, and it was damn creepy. It looked like a living, rotting corpse, and I only saw a glimpse of his face, it was like. The only thing that came to mind to define it was a plate of pasta and tomato sauce with meatballs. I saw it running through the field on all fours, then standing on two legs, looking at me for one or two seconds, then walking away calmly into the woods. I immediately took a small trail and crossed that wood, he just came in, but I didn't see him again. Even if we have a lot of strange creatures roaming our untouched mountains of forests, such as Dau, the Hutseron, the Taselworm, etc., I never heard about this kind of thing here. I don't know what I saw, but it was ducking scary. A friend and I saw something several years ago. It was very thin, and its skin looked as if it had a full-body latex suit on. Very shiny. Bone structure in its face, but no eyes or orifices. You could see the ribs. The head was elongated, and the fingers were long and pointy. Had a peculiar looking gait to it. This was late at night, and the creature was directly under a security light in my friend's backyard. We had been sitting quietly in his truck. This thing walked up, not noticing us. Maybe 15 feet in front of us, directly under the security light. My friend screamed, and it jumped and faced us. It then took off towards the woods. We had been gone for a while and were just sitting in the driveway, chilling, before we went in. We had actually pushed the truck to the house because we had run out of gas right before we got back to his house. We finally got brave enough to run into the house, but the door was locked, and he didn't have a key because he never locked the house. Then we go around the house to try to get through his bedroom window, only to find that it is open. Not only was it open, but the screen was wadded up and shredded on the ground. Anyone have any idea what this thing could have been? This was in 1996 or 97. I've never been able to figure it out. This happened two hours ago. My friend is on an emergency trip to California and is driving through Nevada at this moment. She has been driving since yesterday afternoon, occasionally stopping to nap. I called her two hours ago and woke her up, she was so tired she had to rest somewhere between Clive and Wendover. When I called her, she was trying to tell me something very strange had happened but couldn't get it out. At the end of that call, she passed a doll that was either tied or impaled on a post next to the road. I just got off the phone with her a few minutes ago, and she told me that she had stopped to get some sleep. She laid down and was dozing off, listening to the cars drive by on the road, when everything went completely silent. She assumed it was a break in the traffic, but after napping for 10 minutes, she heard something moving outside of her car. She didn't see anyone, so she laid back down and then heard something kick sand up onto the passenger door of her car. She got up, decided to leave, and when she looked out her passenger side window, she saw something that was blacker than black. She couldn't describe it other than that it was blacker than black, and there was definitely something at the window of the passenger side door. This was right when I called her the first time. A few minutes later, she saw the doll on the side of the road. If anyone has any ideas on what happened or similar experiences in the area, I would love to hear them. 
This was about 16 to 17 years ago, but my brother, myself, and a couple friends were out driving around on a country road one night around Jefferson County, Indiana. It was about 2 a.m., and we were heading back to our house when this creature ran in front of the car. It was probably about the size of a chimpanzee, with white fur and long arms and the head shape of a canine. This thing is burned into mine and my brother's memories, as well as the memories of two of the other people who were in the car that night. I'm curious if anyone else has seen or heard of anything like it. I've poured over numerous posts and articles about cryptids and can't seem to find anything that really matches them. Also, weird point, but the way I always described it was if the mongoose bike mascot from the 90s was a real creature. A lot of people have suggested dog man, I don't think it was. This thing was short, maybe 4 feet tall, with a body similar to a chimpanzee, very muscular, and could most likely walk bipedally, but while it ran, it used its arms as another set of legs. So when my friend and I were younger, we used to love the idea behind cryptids, still do, so we'd make trips into nearby woods to try and see something. Well, one day, on our way back from the woods near my house, we had the feeling of being followed, so we turned around, and what we saw frightened us. A humanoid creature, all white and without a visible face, crouched down, slowly following us. Although as soon as we saw it, whatever it was, it took off into a nearby cornfield, and to this day, we still vividly remember it but have no idea what it was. I spent a lot of time in the woods with one of my friends. We're both fairly young male teenagers. Him 14, me 16 we both know there are some weird things going down in those woods, but we keep pushing inward. We'll hear people talking, but see nobody. There are mysterious abandoned shelters with no signs of life. Even the wildlife is much more elusive than you'd expect. I've only seen one squirrel, three deer, and a dozen birds in about 24 hours spent in the woods. Though I did see something else. It looked like a man with fur, walking through deep water only 20 feet away from me. He or she didn't see me. I looked hard to spot him, but it looked like he had disappeared. I had my friend come down with me, and my parents walked the trails near the area, on the other side of the river. We didn't see them where I saw the figure. It's been raining a lot lately in our area, so I can't go searching for a few days, but my friend and I are heading right the hell out there ASAP. I have no explanation for the figure, it couldn't be a deer, the ones we've seen are much shorter. The figure appeared to be at least 6 feet tall. We don't have bears in the area, not for plenty of miles. If Sasquatch doesn't exist, what is it? At this point, I'm considering that the woods may be haunted. I believe there may be Native American folklore type creatures. Just across the river, there are native burial grounds, so why wouldn't their monsters be there as well? The only thing is, I can't find any cryptids in the local native tribe's folklore that match. Maybe there's some lost species or something chilling in our woods. All I know is that I want to find it. If I get killed, I get killed. On the last day of my camp retreat in Wisconsin, me and my friend were walking up to our cabin to go get our sweatshirts because it was chilly. My cabin is in the middle of two other cabins next to the woods. It is a public campsite, and people come and go as they please. The woods we are next to go on for miles and miles, and there are no known people living in them, as far as anyone knows. So me and my friends proceed to the cabin while the rest of the campers and staff are walking back from night games. When we reach the top of the hill, we take our flashlights out to see where our cabin is. When I reach for the handle of our door, my friend says, Hey! That looks like a guy, while pointing to the woods. I turn to see that there was indeed something that looked like a person. We chuckle, thinking it's part of a tree, but we start to notice that it's a humanoid figure watching us. Its height was abnormal, maybe 6 or 7 feet tall, it had long, human-like arms, its body was grayish, and its neck was white. We look at each other, shocked, and start to back up slowly while still shining the flashlight on the creature. The creature slowly raised its arm and moved towards us, and that's when we booked it down the hill. Later that night, the staff patrolled to make sure nothing else happened around the campus. They come back to our cabin while I am calming down my friend and tell us that they saw some movement near our cabins, but he couldn't tell what it was. That night still haunts me to this day. Before the retreat, my brother noticed something peeking through the main cabin window, but before he could get a good look at it, it backed into the darkness. He only got to see its eyes, and they were far from human. My brother's close friend even heard something trying to mimic the bullfrogs while he was in the porta potty, and when it showed up, all the birds and frogs went silent. On the first day of our retreat, me and my brother also heard a loud dog-like growl. There is no one on this earth who can make a sound as real as what we heard, and there are no dogs to be seen anywhere. I am indeed a Christian, so it could be a demon, but I'm still wondering what this thing is. My brother thinks it's a flesh gate, but does anyone else have any ideas? 
When I was in high school about 10 years ago, I witnessed a pair of slightly glowing yellow eyes looking into my house from the back door. The creature probably stood 7 to 8 feet tall, and the only thing that I could see in the darkness were its glowing yellow eyes. I lived in a suburban neighborhood in East Texas. There was a room full of family in the dimly lit living room, which was connected to this back door. They were eyes for sure, not lights, headlights, or anything reflecting off of the glass. I looked into this creature's glass-like, glowing yellow eyes and felt it was intelligent, despite only being able to see its eyes and nothing else. It didn't necessarily scare me per se, I didn't tell anyone at all. I just turned around and smoked on my front porch instead of out back. Does anyone know what creature I might have seen that day? Do you guys think it may have influenced my actions by keeping me calm and not alerting my family members that were just a couple steps away? I think about it every time I see any form of glowing eyes. Last night, I was with my partner and our friend, and we were at a place called Rafa's Chasms in Gloucester, Massachusetts. We got there at about 9.30 p.m., and we were just going to have a fire on the rocks by the water. You had to walk through some wooded area to get to the rocks, and as we pulled up to the area, I had a bad feeling for some reason, and I usually trust my intuition, but I told myself I was just psyching myself out. Once we got to the spot, I immediately felt a weird feeling, but again, I told myself I was just making things up. Even so, I didn't turn my back to the open space, and I was turned facing towards the woods or rock area. As the people I was with watched the fire, I stared out into the darkness, feeling like something was watching us. I decided to go to a rock further away from the fire so my eyes could adjust to the darkness. And lo and behold, I see a translucent white figure about 50 feet away from us on top of the rocks on the other side of the area, pretty high up. It was moving back and forth, and it looked about 5 to 6 feet tall. It starts to scale down the rocks, and when I say scale, I mean fast, like faster than humanly possible, and as it's doing that, it gets smaller and turns into the shape of an animal like a coyote or wolf, shapeshifters are usually said to take form as one of these. I say, is that an animal? And my partner looks over and immediately gets super sketched out, just as I was. The other person we were with wasn't bothered by it for some reason. He said he saw it, but in the moment, he was trying to convince us it was a person. He was drunk, as I see it coming towards us, I get absolutely horrified that it's going to kill us. I tried to go up higher on the rocks to get away from it. I literally thought that was it. I thought I was going to die. I had the most horrifying feeling, and it was genuinely the scariest and most terrifying thing I have ever felt or seen. I pulled out my phone and shined my flashlight on it to make sure I wasn't tripping, and I think that it deterred whatever it was away from us because it ended up running into the woods and disappearing. My partner and I were completely horrified, and my legs were violently shaking. I said that we needed to leave immediately. The friend that we were with wanted to stay to finish his drink, but we wanted to go. He told us that he would prove that it was a human by trying to run down the rocks as fast as he could to prove that a human could go that fast. But when he did, we could hear him running around. And that's the scary part about what we saw. It was completely silent as it went down the rocks and back up them. We weren't able to process what had happened until we got home after we dropped our friend off. When we did, we decided to do some research about skinwalkers in the area where we were. I am from Cherry Hill, New Jersey, and approximately two years ago, to this day, my daughter and I were riding our bikes. It was bright that night due to a full moon. Not many clouds in the sky, but a few that would once in a while make the night darker. We stopped by a friend's house. She and her two daughters came out, and we were all just talking. I happened to look up in the sky, and there's this flying, long, human-shaped thing with a wingspan approximately 7 to 8 feet wide. It reminded me of the movie Jeepers Creepers. My mouth just kind of opened, and I was speechless and pointing as it went behind the cloud near the moon. I told them what I had just witnessed. Everyone kind of giggled, and I told them it had not come out of the cloud yet to keep looking. Well, to our eyes, it appeared again. My daughter just stood there watching it, repeating herself, Mom, what is that? I know she had that same hard-to-swallow feeling I did, while my friend's two girls ran inside screaming. We watched as it flapped and soared near the moon until it disappeared into the clouds again and never came out. I know what I saw that night, but I wouldn't know what to call it except a flying human-like creature. It was an experience I would never take back, and when I hear others, I really want to believe they had seen the same thing I had. My daughter, to this day, now 14, feels there is so much out there we really don't know much about. What is a myth, and what is real? A night we will never forget and keeping herself busy researching the Jersey Devil to Moth Man and Slender Man. It's out there. A couple of summers ago, I went on a camping trip with some friends just outside of Boone, North Carolina. The campsite was privately owned and was an all-around awesome place. It's called Blue Bear, 
and I would definitely recommend it to anyone who wants good fun camping with no state officials to confiscate their booze. I think it was the second night we were there, we had acquired a half gallon of some evil looking rum. Me and the two fellas I was camping with had opted for one of the more out of the way primitive sites, about a mile hike down the ridge from the main camp sites where everyone else seemed to be staying. We knew no one was close enough to complain about our belligerence and had killed the entire half gallon in no more than 20 to 30 minutes. After that, the night only lasted about two hours. We ran around the woods shirtless, shoeless, and brainless until we all passed out. If it sounds stupid, it's because it was. Lots of fun, though. The next thing I know, I'm awake, wide awake. And I can hear something moving around, probably about 20 yards or so outside of the tent. I feel completely sober and very uneasy. I can feel and hear this thing's presence as it slowly moves through dead leaves and twigs. I'm thinking to myself that this is probably just a deer and maybe, at worst, a black bear. Neither would be much of a problem, as we didn't have any food lying around or anything other than our tent. Then this thing let out a call that was unlike anything I'd ever heard. It's almost impossible to describe what it sounded like, but I can say it was bird-like, like somewhere between a turkey and an owl or something. It was loud as hell, but what scared me about it was its complexity. It sounded like this thing was speaking a full-fledged language. It cried out a few more times, and each time the call was just as complex but completely different. It was extremely alarming and put me in full-on fight-or-flight mode. I sat up and began to build up the courage to go outside and face this creature. Then, just like that, it's morning, and I'm lying on my back, just waking up. Both my buddies are already up and outside of the tent with a fire going. I instantly start losing my SHT and ask if they heard the insane stuff that I had just hours before. Neither of them had, and because I was unable to reproduce the sound at all, I couldn't give them any idea of what it might have been. Fast forward to spring break of the next year, and I'm going camping again, this time deep in the Nantahala National Forest. Which is in the easternmost part of that state and is much more remote than our previous camp. We set up our camp about 8 to 10 miles from the entrance to the park. There were no roads in the area, and the closest civilization was probably 20 to 30 miles away. This time, I'm with three guys other than myself. There is no drinking involved, and we are all sober. It's the third night of the trip, and it's cold. Our spring break took place in early March, and the nighttime temperatures are more than a few degrees below freezing. Once again, I woke up in the middle of the night. I want to say it was around 2.30 or so in the morning. Well damn if I don't hear the exact same freaky ass noise coming from just behind me outside of the tent. I'm instantly terrified this time, as I now suspect that some truly strange shit is going on because I know that this is the exact same creature. This time I'm determined to catch a glimpse of it, or something, before I never get another chance. I'm in my tent with my good friend and his brother. I go to wake up my friend, and once again, it's like I passed out or something, and I'm waking up in the morning. Obviously, I burst out of the tent and started ranting about this unknown bird creature that I've now had two encounters with no one knows what I'm talking about, and my friend doesn't recall me trying to wake him up at all. If anyone has any good ideas as to what this could have been, let me know. A story from my wife's family, they are all from the state of Hidalgo a state that is characterized by arid mountains and its unpredictable weather, but also for its folklore. And as throughout the country, some of this folklore, including a paranormal aspect, says that one of the best known phenomena are the beings known as witches. It is said that they are normal in appearance but can take several forms, including the wheela, turkey, owls, cats, or even fireballs. They can also be separated from their limbs and have a disproportionately long tongue, which is used to feed on the life energy of children, even newborns who are not baptized. The year was 1989, and my wife's cousin, who was one and a half years old, had just returned from the city of Mexico. His uncles were very tired from the trip, so they immediately went to bed, carrying the baby. Now his house was not very big, in fact, because of insufficient economic resources, it did not have a roof, just a few sheets of asbestos, which protected her from the rain and the cold. It was 3 a.m., and her aunt woke up to a peculiar noise that sounded like raindrops on the asbestos sheets. Thinking it was going to rain, she tried to make sure that the baby was tucked in, but the baby was not between her and her husband. Then she heard another sound, like a muffled cry coming from the living room. She immediately got up, like lightning yelling at her husband that their son was not in the bed. Then many things happened at the same time. The child began to mourn his lungs, her husband let out an inhuman cry, and the noise in the ceiling immediately stopped. When she reached the living room, the child was near the door. How he was there is still a mystery. He was a little pale and had a big red spot on the forehead. Her husband commented to her that he was awake but completely paralyzed. He shouted with all his might, 
but nothing came out of his throat. At the time she called his name, he zapped out of his paralysis. The next week, they baptized the child, and they never had something similar happen again. Well, at least no to that family. I lived the first nine years of my life in a village. It wasn't a small place, but everybody knew each other, and everybody knew about the weird stuff that would happen once in a while, but nobody spoke about it. My first encounter with the strange happened when I was seven. It was nighttime, and me and my friends were at the only park there. Our parents were at a restaurant nearby, and some of the older kids were also at the park. At one point, I was alone, sitting on a slide, when the street lights went out. So I am sitting there in the dark, and I look at a house that is across from the park. Above it was hovering a silver flying saucer. I watched it for five minutes before it disappeared. I decided not to tell the others, but when I approached them, they asked me if I saw it. On the same night, around 12.30 p.m., me and my mom started heading home. As we are walking, we are nearing a turn in the road and a little dirt road on the right side of it that leads to a couple of houses. Suddenly, my mom stops me. I ask her why, and she just shs me dot so I look at what she is looking at, and there is a man walking in front of us with really long arms that were reaching his knees and a head that was turned a 360 degree looking at us. It disappeared at the turn of the road, and a couple of seconds later, there was a bright light. We stood there for a bit before continuing. Even today, my mom rarely speaks of it. Two months later, it was the middle of the summer, and I was the only seven-year-old there. Most of my peers were gone on vacation or visiting other family members. A couple of the older kids wanted us to go and pick cherries at this great cherry tree belonging to a man that lived at the edge of the village. Some adults, when they saw where we were headed, warned us not to go, but of course we didn't listen. Before we even reached the place, we heard some strange noises behind some bushes, so we decided to check it out. Past the bushes was an open field, on it was a dead cow, and feeding on it was some creature that would fit the description of a dog man and the beast of Bray Road. It turned its head towards us. Its red eyes looking directly at me. It gave us a smile, showing all of its teeth. We started running and didn't stop until we were at the center of the village. It becomes night, and I have to head home. The road that leads to my neighborhood is kind of surrounded by forest. As I am passing by a cornfield, I hear a growl from a little path that goes into it. I look at the path, it is pitch dark. The only thing I see are those red eyes and the smile that starts to form. I start running, and that thing comes after me. It gains on me, and I swear it said, you are mine in a very deep, menacing voice. At this moment, my neighbor's dogs start barking, and I see them coming from up the road. Thanks to them, it lost its momentum for a bit, and I managed to reach the front door. I climbed over it and sprinted across the yard and into the house. The dogs continued barking for a while. Even today, 13 years later, I sometimes have nightmares about it. When I was 8, it was evening, and I was playing at the park when I looked at the sky and saw a bright yellow star falling down. I thought, a falling star, but it then suddenly stopped and started doing some maneuvers before flying up and disappearing. Two weeks later, me and a friend were near the place where I encountered that beast. When he spots the same object falling down in the distance, we watch it as it stops and hovers above a forest before landing into it. The next day we are there again with a bunch of kids telling them about the star when we see the field next to that forest in flames, which would disappear and reappear in a different spot. Maybe someone could explain that, but it was weird. We've got a buddy that everyone has said for years is something attached to him that follows him wherever he goes. When he's doing okay, less depressed, and not on weeks-long benders, it is less and pretty much disappears. When he's on a bender and being self-destructive, he says it turns into a real thing. He hit rock bottom a while back, and we took him in for somewhere to dry out. We have a house we don't really live in, we just stay on weekends. We're working on it, and he is handy. I sat with him through DTs and withdrawals and felt like he was coming out of it. We left to visit family and came back at night. The forest behind the house was dead silent and blacker than black. We got inside, uneasy, and found him unresponsive with a bottle in his hand. We had some old liquor bottles in the basement and didn't even think about it. He apparently sniffed them out. Get him in bed on his side with a cup of water in the living room on an air mattress, feeling like we're getting stared at. The husband started to ask, and I shushed him. He took the baby to bed with him while I made her a bottle. All the while, I'm shaking. We have a raised porch with no ground access, the sliding door to it is in the kitchen. I'm standing at the sink, defrosting breast milk, and my ears are screaming. Every hair on my body is standing up because, in my peripheral vision, there's something standing at that door. I've always been told you don't look, you don't listen, and you don't acknowledge, so I didn't. I did my business and calmly walked to our bedroom, 
even though my little lizard brain was telling me to run. Buddy woke up the next morning and didn't remember anything. Weird shit happens around the house now that didn't before. We lived there for almost a decade with no complaints, but now I've got to figure out a way to run it off. I like sitting on my porch at night, but I am not really feeling it as of late. A friend of mine was just telling me about this story, and I want to figure out what happened. Here are the details and story, she frequently drives around in just weird or unknown areas, and earlier this week she was driving in a new place and suddenly got this awful feeling of dread and being in danger, she is a Native American, so she relies on and trusts her psyche and spiritual senses. She says she's never felt like that before. She's genuinely down to earth, but she was convinced she would die that night. She also felt like she was being followed. She drove past a Jehovah's Witness church, but there were no other buildings around. She started to turn around, just did a U-turn, and she just felt like she was going to die, that she was in danger. She's a naturally fast driver, but she was so freaked out that she drove even faster. She recalls hitting a turn and almost losing control of the car. Another important detail is that she recalls driving and looking out her window to see a group of things. She described them as reflective things on sticks that looked like they may have been lawn ornaments or street signs, but they were too small and not square to be signs, and there were no buildings around. What's weird to me is that she looked at her GPS, which was taking her home, and it said she was 4 minutes away, but she didn't recognize the area at all. There are normally buildings and things around, and she just did not know where she was or even believe she was actually near home. I love the woods. The mountains are home, but there are some hollers you don't venture into. Bad blood, bad earth, or something, but it's not a place for humans to go. There was a holler like that next to the one my family settled in. The woods were blacker, the air colder, and crazy noises came from them at night. We were camping on family property next to the creek, Crick. I was with all my older cousins who loved to scare me, and I loved to be scared but always approached it all with disbelief as a result of them always teasing me and doing jump scares. It was late, the fire had died down because we only had it going for light and recreation. It had the chill of late July nights but was more than comfortable. I needed to pee and steal myself because I figured one of the boys would hear me stir and come screw with me. I walked my happy ass out of the tent as quietly as possible and popped a squat behind a tree a little ways off. I stood up and scoped it out since the moon was full and shining. I was looking for one of the boys, so he didn't terrify me. I'll say now that I started to shiver and could see my breath. I was thinking of that holler and started to get freaked out. Walking back, I saw what I thought was a cousin haunched behind a tree, waiting on me. I pulled a fox trick, circled back on him, and decided I'd scare him. I walked up to him with an increasing dread, but I still ignored feelings like that and persisted. I ran up behind her, jumped, and screamed. When I did, this thing let out a noise I'd never heard and jumped straight up into the tree. Now this was a tall tree, and it jumped straight up into a ba. I flat out ran, screaming my ass off, all the way back to the house. I didn't stop at the tent, didn't look back, and just ran like a hound of hell was on my heels because I was convinced it was. Get in the house, and my great-grandmother is getting dressed to walk out, looking more worried than I'd seen her, muttering about her wards and something crossing. She saw me and about fell over, asking where the boys were. Just then, they all ran in, looking three shades of white. Turns out, after my scare and screaming, they all woke up thinking it was probably just me being a 10-year-old girl and a bobcat or something that scared me. Then that tree started to shake, and limbs were being thrown from it. They said they heard growling and screaming, then more noises like running coming down the ridge behind them, that holler was on the other side of that ridge, they booked it. Mama prayed over us all, and we didn't go back out until the next morning. Our tents had been shredded and thrown onto the coals from the fire. Nothing was left usable. We never camped out there again and Mama spent all day hiking that ridge, burying things periodically. When I asked, she said that was our perimeter, and those wards would keep them out or at least warn her when they crossed. That's why she was in the process of dressing when I ran in. I never knew what they were, Mama said banshees and thought it was funny that I had jumped a scared one up a tree. My girlfriend and I are both very skeptical when it comes to the uncanny. I'm a little less so because of my religious beliefs, but that's kind of beside the point. Yesterday, we were talking about spooky stuff because we both enjoy scary stories and the like as entertainment. However, I joke that, as much as I wanted to see something I couldn't explain to prove myself wrong, I'd probably end up having a heart attack. She agreed and said I didn't want to have an experience. She said it in a way that sounded like she was speaking from experience, and I asked her as much. She confessed that a week ago she and her friend, who is literally her next door neighbor, were walking from her house to her friend's house late at night. 
They live in a very rural area in southern Ontario and are surrounded by miles of forest all around. My girlfriend walked her friend to the end of her driveway and watched her get to her house safely. The reason she made sure her friend got home safely was because she said she felt very on edge. You know the hair standing up on the back of your neck kind of feeling. That's when she spotted a pair of glowing eyes a little ways into the woods. She said they were too high up to be any sort of animal, like a coyote or even a deer. But the vague outline she could see was far too thin to be a big animal like a bear, and it wasn't making a single sound. Now, as a skeptic, I did have a hard time believing this. My girlfriend is the anxious sort, and I was sure she had just been a little on edge because it was so late. What got me was what she said next. She said her friend called her as soon as she got home, and her friend sounded terrified. The friend is the kind of person who doesn't get spooked easily, and her voice was shaking. She explained that she had seen something in the woods too, and their descriptions lined up. Tall. Thin. Silent. Glowing eyes. That got me because they both saw it separately before confirming with each other. It's not the same as when one person says they see something scary, and so the other person's brain attempts to see it too. They both saw it separately. That scares the heck out of me. I know that's fairly vague, but does anyone know of anything like that in this part of Canada? My best guess is the Wendigo, but it's a case of almost, but not quite. This happened to my buddy and me when I was at college during the winter of 2010. I was and still am an outdoorsy guy who has been at home in the woods for a very long time. I've seen and heard a lot, but I've never had an experience like this. I met my buddy at college that first semester, and we became fast friends. Before I knew it, he was inviting me back to his family's place that winter to stay there and do a bit of hog hunting. I have hunted hogs since I was old enough to hunt, so I jumped at the chance. We got to his parents' place, and holy hell, it was beautiful. They own about 1,500 acres out in rural West Texas. His family raises, shows, and sells cattle and is loaded. They are amazing people, and they kind of took to me like a second son. Over my time at college, I visited them a lot. But since his family is avid hunters and the land they live on is mainly for cattle, they own another 1,000 acres they lease to hunters and also use themselves to hunt on. So after a day or two at their primary ranch, we set out to the hunting lease. It was just my buddy and myself, no hunters had leased it that winter yet. We set up our stuff at the little hunting cabin they had and set our alarms to wake us up at 6 a.m. We got some rest and woke up ready to get out to the stand. Being wild college kids, we brought the whiskey and coke and our rifles, spare me the lectures, we were stupid college kids. We got to the stand after a short hike through the cold and hopped on up into the stand. It was one of those big green metal stands that's elevated about 15 to 20 feet in the air. The area it was set up facing was perfect, to the left, about 100 yards, was a mostly caliche rock clearing with trees lining it and dead cactus, in front of us was a wider clearing with sparse trees and various weeds and grass, to the right, a decently dense patch of trees, and behind us was a dense patch of trees and a high fence about 30 yards back. We could not see behind us because the blindness he had was only 180 degrees. Just a back wall and a door with a window that was boarded up because the glass or whatever it had in it was broken. We just set up the chairs, started drinking, and the waiting began. We had a beautiful view of the area and the sunrise coming from the east of where we were. We didn't see anything the first hour, so we just kept drinking and chatting. About an hour after the sun rose, we started hearing some limbs breaking and brushes rustling from behind us. It sounded a good way back, maybe 50 years or more. We readied our rifles, hoping that what we were certain were hogs would circle around. I remember sitting there just waiting, watching the fog from my breath for a good five minutes. The rustling got closer, and then I noticed a really metallic smell. The best way I can describe it is the smell crappy tools give off when you don't take care of them. It's kind of like a mix of copper, vomit, and poop. I looked at my butt and whispered, you smell that, and he nodded and shrugged his shoulders. A minute later, we're still waiting, the rustling seems to get closer. Then it just kind of stopped. After a couple minutes, I could still smell the stink but no noise, and I figured maybe a couple hogs had taken a dump near the stand and moved on. I reach to pick up the bottle as my buddy puts his rifle down, and just as we're doing that, we hear a scream or grunt. I have never heard anything like it, it was like a low grunt that escalated into a gravelly scream, and it sounded like it was right outside the back of the room. Before we could ever really react, we heard a bunch of twigs and branches snap. It sounded like it was right outside the back of the room. Not a couple seconds later, we feel the entire blind shake about three times, like if a car had bumped into it. I dropped the bottle of whiskey and just looked at my friend, and he looked just as freaked out as I felt. We heard a loud, singular grunt, and then the sound of twigs and branches breaking again slowly got quieter. 
We just sat there, too freaked out, to move for what felt like an hour but was only about 10 minutes. I don't know if it was the whiskey or just me trying to be brave, but I got up and opened the door, and nothing was there. We climbed down and had our rifles ready. We both knew it wasn't a hog but tried to convince ourselves it was. We could see the old stand marks on the ground, and the whole stand had rocked forward about 6 inches. There was a bent portion of one of the metal struts and two big depressions where it looked like feet had dug into the rocky ground. We figured whatever stood there was rocking the stand. We stood there looking dumbfounded, and we just decided to get the hell out of there. We drove back to his main house and told his dad. He said to just stay at their house with them for the night, and we would go check it out tomorrow. When we got there the day after, we saw the same things that were there the day prior, and his dad was super confused. I don't think he initially believed us when we told him about what happened. We found where whatever it was had come from, there was a clear path in the grass leading away from the stand, where it had been depressed and you could see tree limbs broken. The highest one that was broken off was about 7 feet off the ground. We walked back 30 yards to the high fence that was there, and sure enough, about a 4 foot wide section had been mangled and bent down. His dad was pissed, obviously, but he was also really confused. He told us that he had never had this happen and reckoned it was just a giant hog, but I never thought so. I don't want to just say it's Bigfoot, but I have never had an explanation as to what could have caused that. Over the years, I've grown to believe in Bigfoot more and more. My dad had an encounter with what he claims could have been Bigfoot as well, so maybe it runs in the family? When I was little, around 6 or 7 years old, I used to go with my family to a house in the woods in West Virginia. I loved it, from the view to the atmosphere. It should be noted that the closest house was 20 minutes away. We went very often, to which I considered myself a boy scout. I loved to go in little by little and no small shortcuts and others. I liked to climb trees and see the sunsets and how the sun faded, until one day it was no more than 5 minutes to the house. When I was up in my favorite tree, I heard some branches breaking, but very slowly, not so far away, I heard something big. I heard my mother call me by my name, which is very strange of her, at least she does it when she is angry. I was excited at first, since I wanted to show him how I climbed trees, which was my favorite. The emotion ran through me until he called me again, but this time in a stronger tone. An instinct took over. It is as if my subconscious says, come down and go home. Every time it was heard louder and closer, it was as if the sound came from everywhere. When I lowered my little legs from the tree, I heard the most horrible scream that I will never forget. I heard a twisted scream from something saying my name. There, I ran as much as I could to the house. While I was moving away, many branches were heard breaking as if something was following me, until the sound stopped and followed that or something, letting out a very loud scream like that of a bear combined with a lion. When I got to the house, my mother saw me with a scared face, and she said, your pants were pissed, and I said, did you call me? She said no. From there, I told her that at first she did not believe me so much, but when I grew up, she told me that very strange things happened out there. Since that time, I have never climbed a tree or entered a forest alone. Sometimes we talk to my mom about this. When I was about 9 years old, we were living in Rockford. We went to the Walmart in Rockford. I was with my dad in the back passenger seat. I was sitting there, looking out the back passenger window. When I saw this creature, it was about 2 and a half to 3 feet tall, crouched down, holding something in his hands. It had 5 fingers and 5 toes. We made eye contact for a few seconds, and since I was really young, I really didn't realize that what I was looking at wasn't just a normal animal or creature because I wasn't yet aware of the paranormal or cryptics. I only found out a couple years ago that my dad saw the same thing on that day. He told me that he'd seen it when we were downstairs talking about seeing different creatures and ghosts and things like that, and that's when he told me that he had seen the same creature after I described it in conversation. So the creature seemed like it was intelligent, it was small, had yellowish fur, as I would call it, and looked like it had little dark spots on its fur. It had four fingers, a thumb on both hands for toes, and a big toe on its feet. It had kind of an oblong shaped head for many years. It didn't have pointy teeth like you see in the picture above. It really didn't have teeth that I could see. It didn't smile or want anything. When I saw the creature, it just kind of stopped, froze, and looked at me for a few seconds before we drove off to go into Walmart. After much searching, this is the closest image I've ever found to what I saw that night. It's pretty close, it even had the same kind of tail. The only real difference is that it did not have the big fangs, and it wasn't a green color. I didn't notice any things, and it had more of a yellowish fur on its body, and again, it couldn't have been more than 3 feet tall from head to foot. The tail is maybe about an extra foot if you take the tail into account. I've heard stories in Wisconsin of the beast of Bray Road and different cryptids and creatures. 
but never anything like this. Has anyone ever seen something close to what I'm talking about? Even though it was many years later that I found out, my dad saw exactly the same thing. Mind you. I did not describe it to him prior. I had no clue, he saw it too. He is a veteran, and even he knew he was looking at something unknown. He has seen lemurs, monkeys, and even had a UFO sighting as a kid. I've looked up, eyes, lemurs, goblins, and anything in between to try and find something close to what I saw. What we both saw. I know it sounds silly. The closest thing I found that is 95% close is a gremlin-like creature. So me and my buddy were fishing in the San Gabriel Mountains late into the night, and we ended up leaving around 5 to 5.30 am while it was still dark. We had our high beams turned on because it was pitch black on that long, narrow road, and we were only going about 15 miles per hour to stay safe. While we were making our way down the mountain, we saw a large, all-black cat cross the road from right to left. We immediately slowed down to a stop to get a good look. Once he was off the road, he walked down the grass line for a few seconds before he disappeared downhill, the right side is pretty much all nature with no established trails, on the left side, there are quite a few trails leading down to the reservoir and a bunch of coves. It had sleek black fur, and I would estimate its size as being about the size of a full-grown golden retriever with a very long tail larger than I've ever seen on a house cat. On more than one occasion, I've seen cat prints on the sandy banks by the reservoir while fishing, but I always assumed them to be mountain lions or bobcats. Now I'm thinking they've been on different tracks all this time. When we had signal again, I immediately looked up Black Panther sightings in Southern California, but I couldn't find anything at all. Just for clarification purposes, I have a good grasp on how big the cat was because there are plenty of boulders and large metal signs along the side of the road for size reference, that's how I estimated his size. The cat was about three cars away when we saw him cross the road, so there was no mistaking him or her for a different animal. While we were tired, we do trips like this pretty regularly, so it's not like we were delusionally exhausted and we were actually having a lively discussion about our next fishing trip at the time, so we were very engaged and alert. Has anyone else had a similar sighting and been laughed at or dismissed? I can tell you from first-hand experience that you're not crazy. This takes place in a small southeastern European country, where I am originally from. What you need to know is that, for various historical reasons, the Industrial Revolution never really happened here quite the way it did in Western Europe. As a result, while massive regions in Western European countries such as the UK, France, and Germany were deforested, the majority of the forests here were left intact, the way they have been for thousands of years. The countries in the region are less densely populated, with high concentrations in the urban areas, leaving certain mountainous and forest locations unexplored even today. The following story, as told to me by one of the survivors, takes place in a low mountainous area, highest peak of about 1,000 meters, 3,300 feet, near the border. Due to long-lasting political tensions with the neighboring country, the region has become the least densely populated in the entire country. There are no cities, factories, mines, or any large roads in a range of 40 kilometers, 25 miles. No railroads pass through the region. There's no cell coverage. There used to be a large military base in the region, but after the end of the Cold War in the late 1980s, it was quickly abandoned. There are just a few small villages scattered across the region, surrounded by dense forest. Access to these villages is difficult and almost always requires off-road vehicles. The region has always been known as the home of various paranormal events. The national folklore says a variety of mythological creatures live in the forests and that some require human sacrifice. Ufologists claim this is the region with the most UFO sightings. Unorthodox historians claim that the Egyptian civilization actually spread across the Mediterranean and covered these lands. The ancient tribes that occupied these lands constructed numerous temples and shrines across the region thousands of years ago. Sadly, few have been properly excavated due to a lack of funds. Due to the forest's well-preserved state, wildlife has flourished, attracting hunters from across the country. My friend and a buddy of his once went hunting for deer in these forests. They drove their 4x4 off-road vehicle as deep as they could and continued on foot. They found deer traces and decided this was a typical route for the animal so they climbed a tree right on top of the tracks and started waiting. Hunting is all about patience, so hours went by, the sun set, and there was still no sign of the deer. After another couple of hours of waiting, they heard some strange noise coming from not too far from where they were standing. They start noticing shadows approaching. The noise began to sound like some sort of music. As it was nearly full and the skies were clear, they were absolutely sure they could see multiple small figures approaching them. As the creatures got closer and the music became louder and more clear, the hunters could make out bulky, 
short humanoid features resembling what folklore calls dwarfs. The creatures noticed the hunters, approached the tree, and started playing music right underneath them. While resembling people with dwarfism, they seemed more bulky, did not quite have human facial features, and were inhumanly agile in their dances. Neither the creature's language nor their music resembled anything the hunters had heard before. The hunters were terrified, to the point that one of them picked up his rifle and aimed down. My friend begged him not to shoot. There were too many of them, they were literally surrounded with no way to run, and there was no way they could take them all out before the creatures reached them, that is, assuming the rifle has the traditional effect. The hunter came to his senses but kept his finger on the trigger. If they start climbing, I'm shooting, he said. So far, the creatures seemed to only dance around the tree. My friend shared that on multiple occasions, he made eye contact with creatures. It was like they were challenging us to do something stupid, just so they could have a reason to finish us off, he shared. He said he could clearly see that they had small blades that they waved menacingly in their dance. Less than an hour later, the creatures left just as they arrived. Once the hunters could no longer hear the music, they jumped off the tree and started running towards the car. My friend claimed that while running, he heard steps behind him but never looked back. Eventually, after the run of their lives, they reached the car and took off. As they drove off, he swore he could see thousands of glowing eyes looking at them from the bushes on both sides of the dirt road. Eventually they reached the nearest village and went banging on the door of one of the few houses with lamps still on. An elderly lady opened, and seeing that the boys were all pale and shaking, she invited them in. They told her what had happened, and she explained that in her village there are numerous stories about dwarfs and nymphs living in those areas. She explained that no one dares walk in those woods, as people are not welcome there. Seeing their condition, the lady invited the hunters to stay for the night. My friend swore that during that night he heard noises outside of the house, and when he finally dared look, he saw the same glowing eyes looking at him through the windows. He rolled over to the other side of the bed, shivering, sweating, and convinced this was the last night of his life. The following morning, the elderly lady instructed the hunters to immediately seek the village priest and pray for forgiveness and protection. My friend, who is traditionally not very religious, told me that was the first thing they did that morning, even waking up the priest early to bless them and pray with them as soon as possible. Needless to say, this was the last time my friend went hunting in those woods, or even set foot in the region, for that matter. So I, 18, live in northwestern France, Normandy, and it's not a place with endless forests, it's flat and boring. Since I was a kid, I would stay for two weeks during the spring holidays at my grandparents' house in the Jura region of eastern France. The Jura region is a hilly place with a lot of forests and amazing wildlife, so it's the opposite of where I'm from. During my time here, I usually go deep into the woods to pick mushrooms and berries, and I never saw something weird. The animals you always see there are deer, foxes, badgers, wild boars, squirrels, rabbits, and, very recently, wolves have been back in this area of France. If I remember correctly, it was the 2nd of May 2022, and as I said, I was in the forest near the village of Gironde to pick berries. I was alone, there was no one around, but it was not something strange because it's a very sparsely populated part of France. The thing that felt strange was the fact that I did not see any animals. No deer, no wild boars, no foxes. It was silent. Not gonna lie, I was starting to get scared because the silence was making me uncomfortable, but I decided to keep picking berries because my mom wanted to make some pies, and I love her pies. I was walking in the woods, and I could see a clearing, and I was thinking about taking a break in this place because I've been walking for almost an hour. It was until I saw that very big and dark mass that was bipedal, and it was standing in the clearing. I stopped walking, and I was staring at that thing behind the trees for like 20 seconds before running back to the village. It was very tall and hairy, probably 210 centimeters, or 7 feet 0 inches for Americans. It looked like a bipedal wolf or like a half dog, half human. I don't know if that thing saw me, but I have not put a foot in this forest since then. When I was back at my grandparents' house, I gave my mom the berries I picked, and I stayed in my room for the rest of the day. I did a lot of research on the wildlife in the Jura region to see if I saw some kind of rare animal, but no, what I saw was not an animal. While doing the research, I stumbled across a story from the 16th century. It's the story of a werewolf that was killing children in the village of Amange in the Jura. Even though Amange is pretty far from Gironde, it's still in the Jura area, so there is a possible connection. I was freaked out by this discovery, but I wanted to know more about werewolf stories in this part of France, so I watched a two-hour long video about two women who were talking about what they saw in the Jura. When I looked at the drawing that one of the women in the video did, my heart stopped because it looked exactly like what I saw. 
I know that werewolves are part of the Jura folklore, there is even a celebration that takes place the last weekend of June to celebrate the story of the werewolf of Amange. Since this experience, I haven't been able to sleep well at my grandparents' house because I feel like I am being watched. The view from my window is nothing but a big forest, so it's not reassuring. I've been back in Normandy since May 9th, but I'm thinking about it every day, and now I want to go back. I didn't tell anyone about this sighting yet because I don't want to sound crazy, and I don't have any pictures to prove that I'm not lying. What do you guys think? Am I crazy? I live in central NJ, last night it's about 10-15 at night, and I'm walking my 4-month-old puppy around my apartment complex to let him do his thing and get ready for bed. Nothing out of the ordinary until we reach a back corner stretch of the complex. The complex is surrounded by woods, and at various times I've witnessed foxes, raccoons, deer, and skunk possums and have been told, but never seen, the presence of wolves in the area. Seeing as my pup is so young and paying attention to anything for more than 5 seconds is a challenge, it was weird when he came to an abrupt stop at this back corner nearest the woods. He sat calmly and without moving for a good 2 minutes. I'm just enjoying the nice night, and I figure there's something right at the edge of the wood that has caught his attention. After letting him sit and stare seemingly blankly into the woods, I give his leash a tug to keep us moving on this alleged walk. The second I tug, he starts barking like crazy. His cute, high-pitched barks strain his little vocal cords, as I've never heard him bark like this yet. Usually he will whine, but these were, to my knowledge, his first attempts at real barking. While I reflected on his lack of bark and how cute and unintimidating it was, I figured something in those woods must really have his attention. At that moment, I hear this noise, which sounds like a human trying to make the sound of a rusty gate swinging open. That instant, the barking stopped. I immediately felt uneasy, there were no fences or gates in these woods, and even if there were, that sound was just not right, it came from a living thing. I tug my dog along, and we take about three steps away. When I feel something behind me, I glance over my shoulder and see what looks like the shadow of a man, about six feet tall, standing about ten feet into the woods. I drag my dog another twenty feet or so, half trying to keep cool and half keeping a look over my shoulder in case I need to pick up my pup and book it. After rounding the curve and being completely spooked, I take a full turn to look back in the woods. Okay, I was probably just imagining it, right? It had to be, but then I hear that same rusty gate sound, but instead of coming from the woods like I had heard before, this time it seemed to be all around me. I glance in every direction and see nothing, but I can feel this guy or thing around me somewhere. I drag my puppy straight home and try to forget about it. Was this just a weird guy messing with me, or does this fit the behavior of a cryptid? I was on my way to go camping and had just crossed the Mackinac Bridge to get to Michigan's Upper Peninsula. It was storming, and it just started pouring buckets of rain. While driving up a hill, my daughter and I saw a man standing in the middle of the road. There was not great visibility with the sheets of rain, but we both pointed out the man standing in the middle of the road, and we were worried he would get hit by a car. When he turned, it was not a man, it was a huge black dog. We both thought it was a man at first, and then it was a dog, and I can't explain it. It could have just been the combination of looking up from the bottom of a hill and the rain. I just think it is odd that my daughter and I both thought we saw a man. I stopped on one side of the road to help it, and so did a man on the other side in a truck. I love dogs and always stop to help when I see one in the road, but I hoped that someone else would be able to help it because my truck was stuffed with camping stuff and the only place it could go in my truck would be the front seat with my daughter and me. It was still in the middle of the road, looking back and forth between the man and me. Seeing it up close, I was a bit surprised to see how big it was. I also felt uneasy and intimidated by this animal. It looked almost like a black German shepherd, but also wolfish. I was a dog groomer, so I have been around a lot of big dogs, and this one was huge. If I had to guess what breed it was, I would say a wolf hybrid. The guy yelled over, asking if it was my dog, and I yelled back, no. The man then yelled here, boy and patted his leg, and the dog ran off to him. Seeing that the dog was being taken care of, I got back in my truck and got back on the road towards our camping destination. My daughter was telling me how it looked like a person standing in the road, and then when it turned, it was a dog. It may not be paranormal, but it was definitely an interesting experience. Back in college, maybe 10 years ago at most, a best friend and I got a ride to her house from a party in Reno, Nevada. I lived a block away, so I planned to smoke a couple cigarettes with her on the ratty patio couches of her place before walking home. As best we can remember, it was close to 2 or 3 a.m., and all we consumed that night was alcohol, probably mixing beer and liquor, there were no other controlled substances. 
as we're sitting on separate couches on either side of the front door of her house, neither of us notice what looks like a pile of black trash bags across the street. Was it recyclable? Who knows what? But we're just shooting the shit, catching up on who made the biggest ass of themselves that night, when that lump of whatever suddenly rises across the street. The thing didn't push itself up or bend its knees. This thing rose from horizontal to vertical, like you'd see a vampire do in a cheap horror movie. It towered nearly as tall as the stop sign next to it, with a street light casting an ominous shadow. It was looking at us. From memory, I can guess it was just before or right after the winter term started, so January. And the frigid air condensed the clouds of breath coming from this bulking figure's chest. The light above prevented us from seeing its face or any other distinguishable features. But it was huge. Its shoulders heaved with each breath. I couldn't see its eyes, but somehow I knew or felt it was staring straight at the porch. Neither of us could move. I tried to whisper a warning to my friend to get up, get up, and get inside. I can't, she rasped. We can't remember how much time passed, but we remained immobile, fearing that whoever moved first would trigger an attack. The thing just kept on breathing at us. I somehow got the nerve to stand up, grabbed my friend by her wrist, dragged us both inside, locked the front door, and turned off the lights. She grabbed a knife from the kitchen, and I grabbed a rolling pin, yeah. When we returned to the living room, pulled back the curtains, and looked for the thing, it was still there. Just staring at us, breathing, and watching. We can't recall how much time passed. But eventually, the thing ran across the street towards her yard. It ran back. It ran in circles at the T intersection. Back and forth down the other street. All at a speed completely incapable for a human. Eventually it ran, again at what seemed like a superhuman speed, down a road away from my friend's house and into the neighborhood. None of her roommates or our friends believed us at the time, and now they do. They assume we were just stoned, we weren't, or that we just wanted a story to tell at parties. But I've never heard of two drunk college kids hallucinating the same thing. And we both were so terrified that we slept in the same bed that night, pulling it away from the window that faced the street, knife and rolling pin in hand. My dad once told a friend this story, and he thinks we saw a mothman. Another college student later died on that street. I've wondered if it was a Sasquatch or cryptid, but are those known to move so fast? Most of my life, mostly childhood, I've seen gray humanoids, about the size of an adult person, that live exclusively on the ceilings of buildings. I used to call them heights because when I was afraid to go on the top bunk or have a shoulder ride indoors, people said I must be afraid of heights. I was like three when I started calling them that, and I just never bothered to rethink it. Nowadays, knowing that there are people who study beings like that, I'm interested to know if anyone has seen them other than me. I started seeing them in rural Tennessee, then in rural Idaho when we moved, but stopped seeing them as much when I moved to the city, but I'm sure if I cared to look, I'd still see them occasionally to this day as there's a very particular calming energy they bring about. I do want to note that even though I was initially afraid of them as a kid, I very quickly found that the heights were not malicious at all. Lost objects would show up in the tops of cupboards, my hair would be pushed out of my face at night by cold hands, etc. It was more like they were just there. Watching and taking care of me. They're completely gray, humanoid, and either have very vague facial features or none at all. Long fingers, perpetually freezing cold, and, as I said before, very gentle and kind. No one I've ever talked to has seen these, but I know that the things moved or found to be higher up than any of my siblings could reach were all also seen by my family. 